Let me see if I mute everyone. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm just taking everyone out of the waiting room. Okay, I'm muting everyone as they're coming in. And Jessica and Melissa, I un I asked you guys to unmute. Okay, we're good. So I'm going to just give a few more minutes. My name is Eileen Matola. I'm here from Haverford Township Recreation Department. With me is Melissa Romana and Jessica Lazaro. Jessica, am I pronouncing your name That's right? That's correct. Yep. Okay, good. Um, they are with the EA6. So just give us a few minutes. Everyone's popping in now. And we'll start. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Or this evening. I think you have a lot to learn. I was just saying to uh, Melissa and Jessica, it's not, people feel like it's so confused. And I said, it should be simple, but it's, it's not. And every time I go to one of these, I learn something. <laughs> Give me a few minutes. There's still people coming out of this waiting room. It's just seven o'clock now. And we are recording this tonight. So um, if for some reason you have to leave early, we don't want you to, but you can just, I'm gonna send everyone the link to the recording in a couple of days. Okay, great. About seven o'clock now, so I think we can start. Welcome tonight, everyone. My name is Eileen Matola with Haverford Township Recreation Department. I think you guys are going to learn a lot today, and we're very happy you were able to join us. I am here with Melissa Romano and Jessica Lazaro. You guys want to just do a little wave? Um, they are going to enlighten you about recycling and terracycling and all the great initiatives that the EAC brought to our township. And um, they really are saving the world. So thank you for um, coming out tonight. I am the one who sent you the link to the, to the Zoom. So always feel free afterwards. If you have any questions, just send them to me. I will then send it to them because they know the answers. And um, I mentioned a few seconds earlier that, I'm sorry, I'm still admitting people from the, from the waiting room. I mentioned a few minutes earlier that we are also recording this. So it'll be on a YouTube channel and it's also gonna be on cable vision. I'm not sure how that's gonna work out, but I will send an email to everyone now that I have your email to let you know. So um, without further ado, I believe Melissa, you're starting first, correct? Correct. I'll pay, I'll send it over to Melissa and uh, I will mute myself. Thank you. All right, give me one second. I'm gonna pull up my screen here. All right, welcome everybody. So I'm Melissa Romano. I'm gonna start the first half of this talking about recycling in Haverford Township. And then we're gonna talk about some additional recycling opportunities that you may not be aware about. Um, so first I wanna talk about what us as taxpayers are paying for. We pay for our recycling, we pay for our waste pickup, we pay for our leaves pick, picked up in the fall. Um, we actually do not pay for our brush, which is a free service for the township that we need to utilize a lot better. Um, and then our wastewater um, gets treated by anaero anaerobic digestion, which is important to know when we start talking about waste, we also talk about food waste. Um, so just recycling in general, 
we pick up recycling for Haverford Township and it goes to this Re Republic Recycling Material F Recovery Facility, otherwise known as MRF in King of Prussia. Um, we put our, our can out front, it goes to this recycling place and they sort it all. So we don't need to sort it at home, but it does need to be sorted at its final destination. So that's important to remember because we're gonna talk about how um, different components need to be either cleaned or sorted or what needs to be done before it can go into your container. Um, the other thing um, to think about is this, this brush service that it's free. It's, you know, this is our yard waste. This is sticks and, and plants and things. Um, last year, we put a, we got a new company and it's no longer accepted in those brown paper bags. And it seems like a lot of people are not aware of this. So if you bag up your, your whole yard, you spend all Sunday doing this and you put it in a bag on your curb, it's gonna be picked up in with the trash, with the waste, which we're paying for. So we could do it properly by just putting it in a can, just like you're recycling, put it on the curb and they'll pick it up on your brush day. Um, but it's important to know that it you can't have it in a bag, you can't have it um, in a box or, or anything like that. Um, also, you can't have grass or dirt or leaves or rocks in it. But if we can utilize that, we can get all that brush out of our waste stream and stop paying for it. Um, so a little bit about recycling in general. Um, single stream started in the 90s um, and it's made to be easier for us, the residents. We don't have to sort it into separate bins and put it out on separate days and all this. But like I said, it does need to be separated at some point. So we do need to be aware that we have to do it right. And this recycling um, is specific for Haverford. You know, each township has their own company that they send their waste to. And the rules that we talk about and what we accept and how we need to do things is based on the company that it's going to. So um, around 2017 or so, we've been overwhelmed with plastic. Plastic is really, um, not the best thing in for the environment and a couple countries stopped taking our plastic from America because they have too much of it and there's nowhere to to put it all so really we need to kind of think about our whole entire lifestyle about do we really need this plastic but now we have all this plastic in America with nowhere to go and we were actually sending it straight to the dump so we were sorting it putting it out and then it ended up going right from the recycling facility to the dump because there was no, no one could use it. We didn't have a place to put it. So now things are starting to pick up more and we're starting to use more recycled products. Hopefully that changes, but we need to um, have a lot better manufacturers using recycled products. Um, and part of the problem is some of these plastic facts at the bottom, you could see it's cheaper to to use new plastic than use recycled plastic. And that's a problem. It, it always comes down to cost. And that shouldn't be the only reason why we use something over something else. Um, plastic also loses it, its integrity. So once it's recycled and it's made into something else, eventually it starts breaking down and it can no longer be recycled at some point. Um, uh, luckily, our recycling fees last year were, were actually more than our trash. So this year, the recycling market has come down and our recycling is a lot less. We're paying about $29 a ton for recycling, but $78 a ton for trash. So it's really important now that we make sure we get all this recycling properly in our can so that we're paying a lot less and not having plastic in the trash. If we can recycle properly, we could save a lot of money. Um, couple facts just to know, uh, if you didn't know, if you're a new resident, you can get a, a new can for free. Um, and if you just need an extra can or you lost your can or you need another can, you can go to Public Works and they're only $18. Um, or you can go to Public Works and you can get this free sticker and you could put this on any can you want. It's a free sticker, just go to Public Works, take as many as you want, throw it on any can. So here's some things you should know about what you're doing in your can. First, it, it needs to be clean. There can't be any food residue on your, on your recycling. It needs to be dry, it can't be wet, and it needs to be loose in the can. So when we talk about loose in the can, we mean in that blue bin, um, not, not in like a brown box or you know, not in a plastic bag, a garbage bag, a brown bag, nothing like that. We, we need this to be able to be sorted later on down the road at the recycling company. Um, also break down your boxes. A lot of people, 
complain that their boxes get thrown in the trash truck. And it's probably because if they see a box that's not broken down, they don't know what's inside of it. So you open that box, here's all this packaging material. You got paper, you got plastic, you got air bubbles. This box isn't recyclable because it's gonna get crushed and all that plastic's gonna be stuck in it and then it can't be recycled properly. So they, you, you really need to break down your boxes. You need to take all that packing material, styrofoam, air bubbles, all that stuff out of it. Um, and just recently Public Works is, is saying you can tie your boxes if they don't fit in the bin, but the best thing to do to make sure your boxes get recycled is cut them small enough so they fit in the bin. Um, one of the biggest problems in the recycling industry is plastic grocery bags. They are not recyclable in our blue bin. So everything may have a recycling symbol on it. Doesn't mean it's recyclable. Doesn't mean it's recyclable in your blue can for your pickup. So the plastic grocery bags, they are actually a really big hazard in the recycling industry. When your recycling goes to Republic, they have a machine, big conveyor belt, you know, magnets pick up the metal and, um, cans drop down and um, there's air that blows the paper. So these plastic bags, they actually are so light that they get stuck in the gears and they cause the machines to, to break down and somebody has to go and fix it and pull the, the plastic bags out. So the plastic bags are a huge, huge problem. Um, also, because they don't take any bags, there's no bags um, for the recycling. Like we don't want the recycling in a bag either because that's contamination and it's not um, accepted. Also no straws, no silverware, no styrofoam. These are just not accepted. They're not recyclable at our facility. Um, they're not desirable, they're too small. Um, so nothing smaller than the size of a credit card. You can't just throw any little piece of plastic, you know, like if you think there's milk cartons, you pull that little top off. That little top isn't recyclable by itself because it's too small. It's going to get stuck in those machines and be a problem. So nothing smaller than a credit card in general. Um, and then no combinations of paper, plastic, metal. So again, it has to be sorted. So when you get another thing, like you get these envelopes, they got plastic bubbles inside, but their paper outside, but you can't separate them. So these, these are just trash unless you have an alternative option to, to use. Um, some cans like this Pringles can, it's, you know, you would think it's paper, but it's got a metal bottom, it's got a plastic top, it's got a foil liner, these kind of things you just can't. And if you, if you look at them, it actually says, you know, not recyclable. Um, so a lot of things are getting labeled a lot better, but you got to be careful of how you separate everything. So here's a, a good what not to do. Like we said, we don't want it in a plastic bag. You could see there's, I have another um, example with the wine bottles. That wine bottle has a metal lid. This one has a cork on it. These things aren't. So the lid needs to be thrown away. The cork needs to be thrown away or unless you have another option. Um, also pizza boxes, we'll get to. Pizza boxes, if they're covered in grease, that's food and that grease will contaminate paper. So this is what we don't wanna see right here. Um, again, the boxes, this is a big problem. A lot of the boxes, especially toys for kids, they're really complicated these days. So you got to take out the packaging material. Sometimes you got to take out those tabs on it or, you know, you should take a lot of the tape off. Our, our general rules are you don't have to, but, you know, the, the cleaner you can make it, the better and more recyclable it is. Um, also, watch out. Everything with a recycle symbol is is not recyclable. You could see here um, some some examples um, that little piece of plastic string, a tape contain like these are not the desirable plastic that our recycling company is looking for. They're looking for more heavy duty jars, containers that you would use around the house. This is just a general, you know, off the internet, dirty dozen. These are the the worst things for recycling. The plastic bags, like I said, is number one. Um, you don't want your stuff in a plastic bag. Um, shredded paper, it's too small. Um, we do accept shredded paper, but it has to be enclosed in a brown bag. So the brown bag is paper, the paper inside is paper. That keeps that shredded paper from blowing away or getting contaminated. Um, no scrap metal. I, my husband's really good for this. He goes, oh, it's a screw, it's metal, right? But that screw is too small. It's not, when they, when you're, recycling metal, you're recycling aluminum and tin cans, you know, soda cans, tuna cans, those kind of things. You can't just throw any piece of metal you have laying around the house in your bin. Um, no hazardous waste. 
uh, no diapers. I don't even know why people would think they're recyclable. Um, no non-recyclable plastic, that's that styrofoam we talked about. Um, we also don't take Tupperware containers. Like there's there's a lot of exclusions and, and this stuff is tricky and you know it keeps changing, the market keeps changing and you have to kind of roll with the punches and be educated and, and know what you're doing. Um, no caps or lids on bottles or jars. So like these caps, you think they're metal, but on the inside they have plastic so that it secure onto the jar. So these are not recyclable. Um, no liquids. We don't want any food, any water. If you have a, a bottle with some liquid in it, it could damage some paper, cardboard boxes. Um, no ceramics or glass. You can't just throw a window or a glass, you know, glass is specific to glass jars. Um, and no fruit, frozen food containers. So that's a good one. Um, bunch of examples I have, you know, ice cream, frozen food container. Uh, sausage links, even cups. The reason why these kind of things are not recyclable, they're called waxed or coated paper. And the problem is the, the reason why they're waterproof is because they're covered in plastic. So there's a liner on these of plastic to keep um, things from leaking. And that's why they're not recyclable. And Melissa, somebody asked you to go back up to the no flattened containers. I think it might've been number eight. Oh, yeah. Like I said, this is just kind of general off of the internet. That one doesn't specifically to apply to us or not. Um, it, it doesn't really matter if it's flattened or not. Thank you, though. So in, in general, when in doubt, throw it out. If you're holding an item and you're like, is this recyclable? Is it not? Throw it in the trash. It's better to throw it in the trash than to put something in the recycle bin that doesn't belong. If you go to the recycling um, Murph place and there's a bunch there's a whole pallet of stuff with the recyclable stuff on it but half of it's trash they're just going to send that whole pallet into the trash so it's always better to throw it out in the trash if you're not sure um so a lot of information there how can you find it we have a township web page uh, if you go to the township web page uh right on the front page you see the brush and trash recycling symbol you click on that you scroll down you can find um there's at the bottom, it says single stream recycling PDF or frequently asked questions and answers. These are both, you can download them, you can print them. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you the, the this is just the, the single flyer and this usually comes to your mailbox. I think everyone just got one last week or so. Um, pretty, pretty basic information, just what we accept, what we don't. Um, the, the, Frequently asked questions, I'll go over a couple things, but it is 26 pages long. It's pretty big, it's detailed. It's specifically what from each room in your household can be accepted in recycling or not. Um, so just, I'll give you a couple examples. Um, one of them is our milk cartons accepted. So again, we talked about that coated paper that makes it waterproof. Milk cartons are the exception. So yes, if they say Terra Pack, Tetra Pack, Pure pack, aseptic, any of these, that's fine. They're even though they do like it looks like there's like a metal like foil liner on it. These are fine, um, but milk cartons in general get separated from our recycling and are sent to a specific company that recycles the milk cartons. So even though they are coated, it's the one exception. Um, and the plat, there's a little plastic pour spout that can stay on because it's kind of hard to get off, and they can um, do that. Um, plastic bottle caps and metal jars. I told you about the metal jar. Same thing with bottle caps. They're just too small. It's not the right type of metal. Um, so they can't be accepted. Tin foil and aluminum foil, even if it's clean and there's no food, we don't accept it. Shredded paper, it's only accepted if it's in a brown paper bag. Um, and aerosol cans. This is actually something that needs to be updated. Like I said, that the market changes, you gotta kind of roll with the punches. Aerosol cans, they used to be accepted as long as it was not hazardous in it, but the um, recycling company says that too many people didn't empty them, therefore they end up exploding and it's a hazard for the workers. So now aerosol cans are no longer accepted across the board, hazardous or not. Um, so if you look at that FAQ on the web page from a couple years ago, it'll say yes if it's not hazardous, but the answer is now no, and we will be updating that soon since we just found out. Um, styro styrofoam is not recyclable at all. So even if it has a symbol on it, like I said, it's not recyclable. Um, junk mail with plastic windows. This was actually one of your questions in the chat too. Somebody <laughs> yes. asked about this. So the answer is yes. Um, although if you have the time and you feel like taking them off, that would be better. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, same thing with staples, tape, and labels on boxes. The answer is no, you don't have to remove them. Would it be better? Absolutely. I always do, especially, you know, labels, your address is on that. You don't want that floating around anyway. Can I break down cardboard boxes and place them inside another cardboard box? The answer is no, but you can flatten them all and tie them together. And can I recycle greasy pizza boxes? No. Um, the grease is a contamination. Um, if you have the bottom half is greasy and the top half is not, you could take the top half off, put that in your recycling can and put the, the other half in either trash or compost or a fire pit or something. So I know there's a lot, it, you're already confused and I'm gonna make this even more confusing for you because these are all the exceptions. Um, cardboard boxes have to be broken down, but you can leave the tape and labels on. Um, paper junk mail, shredded mail can and should go in a paper plastic or in a paper bag. But like we said, we don't want anything else in a plastic bag or a paper bag or anything. Um, paper labels can be left on aluminum and glass um, because they, they, when they melt them, it actually uh, liquefies off. So that's okay. Um, if you can take them off, why not? I usually do because I soak my cans and eventually the paper falls off anyway. Uh, plastic lids, they, they can be left on plastic bottles. So if you have like a two liter bottle, you can put the lid back on it, but the lid cannot be by itself. You can't throw the lid in separately. It has to either be on the bottle or not in it at all. Um, and then plastic labels, like Eileen said, always learning something. I learned this from Jessica the last time we did this. You could see that picture there. This came right from this, this bottle. So this, it actually says this bottle is not recyclable if this label is on it. So you need to peel this plastic label off before you recycle this container. Um, the plastic windows, they can be left on junk mail um, and no coated paper except those milk cartons. So uh, now there's some new products coming out. So now you, you need to be really cautious on what you are doing. Um, packing peanuts have never been accepted anyway but now they're making new packing peanuts that are plant-based and they're dissolvable. You just run your faucet, put them in there and they dissolve. So, you know, you have to know what you're, you're buying and you're using. Um, there's a new styrofoam, you know, it's like soft and thin. It almost looks like paper. And somebody asked if we can put this in with like a paper or with a plastic grocery thing, but it's, it's styrofoam, it's not. So, you know, you gotta watch the rules. And I got this the other day, I was really surprised it was FedEx, but I was like, this doesn't feel like paper. And I removed the outer layer and I saw the plastic inside. So you really gotta be cautious and careful. And, you know, like I said, when in doubt, throw it out. Um, they, they're also making now a lot of compostable, biodegradable, plant-based, plastic bags and containers and all these other things. But if it's made with plants, you can't recycle it with plastic. Um, so we will talk a little bit about composting. So we've always taught recycle, reduce, reuse, right? The three R's, there is so many more R's right now. So we're gonna talk about the seven R's of sustainability. Um, so let me tell you the def definition of sustainability. It's the avoidance of the depletion of natural resources in order to maintain an ecological balance and to meet the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to also meet their needs. So it's not really just we need to recycle, it's we need to rethink our whole mindset and make sure that we're leaving this planet better for the next generation. I hope my kids have a better future and they're not stuck next to a, a landfill, you know? Um, we currently use an entire year's worth of resources in just a half a year. So there's a thing called Earth's Overshoot Day. It, last year, the Overshoot Day was July 29th. So we use a whole year of resources by July 29th. So we're really using more than we're generating um, and, and we're not properly recycling things. Um, plastic, 10% of plastic is actually recycled. That's not a lot. <laughs> uh, roughly an entire dump truck of plastic is dumped in the ocean every minute. And it takes 450 years for a plastic bottle to break down. And we use 50 billion bottles, uh, water bottles every year just in America. So we really need to work on doing better, uh, being sustainable and taking care of our earth and our future generations. Um, we need to rethink our whole lifestyle. Um, Really, ideally, the key solution would be zero waste. We don't want to waste anything. And that's obviously impossible. We're going to have some kind of waste, but we want to strive to do the best we can to achieve that zero waste. Um, when we throw something away, it goes somewhere. 
you know, just because it leaves your your property, um, it doesn't disappear. Um, it goes to Chester to be incinerated, you know, and there is um, negatives to incineration and landfilling. They're both not environmentally friendly for our planet. Um, when we throw something away, that's called an open loop. We have a product, we use it, we throw it away, we're done. What we really should try is have a closed loop system where that product, when we're done, doesn't end up in a landfill. It ends up being reused or repurposed or, or something. So um, it sounds intimidating, a, a zero waste lifestyle, but really just take it one step at a time and we can do it. Um, so let's look at the, uh, the, the seven R's. Um, after rethinking your lifestyle is refusing. That, that's a pretty easy one. Um, personally, I refuse any unnecessary excessive plastic, um, plastic bags, straws, utensils, coffee stirs, all that kind of stuff. Do you really need it? Um, you could re refuse your lid, you know, and just have a, a cup or you can bring your own cup and refuse everything. Um, so by not using things and not purchasing and not buying things, that saves us from having to throw it out later down the road. Um, and reducing, reducing plastic packaging and individualized multi-packing, you know, it's, it's very convenient, but it's very wasteful. If you could buy in bulk, buy a big bag, portion things out, use reusable containers, you're reducing a lot of your waste. Um, next is repurposing and reusing, which Jessica is going to get into in the, in the second half of it. Um, Recycle is number six after all those steps. So really recycling is one of the last things. Um, but even after that is, is rot. We talked about a little bit about waste. It's, it's actually better to put your table scraps down your garbage disposal to be treated at a wastewater facility than be incinerated in Chester. Um, so rot is um, important because that's gonna take all that food waste out of our trash. If we can, not waste as much food. I mean, personally, I would freeze leftovers or donate it or, you know, do something. You, know, you want to try to make, buy and purchase things that, you know, you're going to use, use right away, use before it goes bad, that kind of stuff. But if you do get into the situation where, you know, you have some food, we want to do something more sustainable with it. So we do have um, a, a composting uh, webinar next week. January 12th, it's gonna be online again and you can register through the recreation department just like you did for today. Um, a little fact, uh, in America, we waste 108 billion pounds of food annually, which cost $161 billion. Um, another reason why we recommend not wasting so much food is food also decomposes in a landfill and releases methane, which is a greenhouse gas that's warming our climate. Um, so there's, there's it's a big picture. We got to take it all into consideration. Um, I just wanted to show you a little thing that I do with my food. I freeze my scraps, like my carrot ends and my celery ends, and then I make some veggie broth. And then that way I, I don't have to buy a veggie broth. Um, and then I use um, worms to compost my food scraps in the summertime. And when I'm not doing that, I use um, Mother Compost, it's a service that'll come and pick up my food waste, which if you're interested in learning more about that, uh, definitely check out this webinar next week. All right, so I'm gonna hand it over to Jessica and you could talk about some more recycling opportunities. Yeah, Melissa, before we start this oh, yeah. path, I wanna go through some of the questions that way we don't get too far backed up. Yeah. Um, some of the questions were actually already answered, um, but I know somebody mentioned about, you know, when it rains, the recycling gets wet anyway. I think that was probably when you were talking about cleaning and drying everything. I don't know if we want to touch on to that. Or you're, you need a lid. That's yeah. why. You need a lid on your can. And if you don't have a lid, you can get another lid. You can get another can with a lid. Yeah, and I per I've personally done it. I've been able to get it from the township and uh, they're great. They've actually delivered it to my front lawn. So uh, it's convenient. Uh, another question was, are leaves picked up with sticks and yard waste if not bagged? Or leaves, say that again, picked up with the yard waste. They're asking if leaves are picked up with like the yard oh. waste, like on Monday, if not bagged, but I don't believe so. I believe it's only during not, leaf collection season. Right, yeah, it, they, there's only specific leaf collection season and leaves are not accepted in the brush waste. Uh, that's one, one was plastic. A, what are, a, tip, a tip about leaves, I mean, if you have a pile of leaves, um, one of our uh, co-volunteers, which she'll do is put it in a trash can, get a weed whacker, mulch it, put it on your own property. I mean, leaves will compost themselves if you put them in a pile somewhere. 
that's actually what we do. We're, we don't have large trees on our property. So we just, we cut them up with the lawnmower and then they break down and they're, they're gone within a couple of weeks anyway. Mm -hmm. um, somebody asked, uh, oh, but some water bottles say to recycle the cap. We get to the question. Somebody I think has a show and tell, I think there. Um, I guess is that Lindsay that asked about the water bottles say to recycle the cap? Hold on. So oh, a lot of plastic bottles do say replace the cap, which is fine. And you can put the cap back on the plastic bottle, but make sure it's on there tightly because you can't recycle the cap by itself. Right. And the key to remember with that is it's fine when it's plastic to plastic, but do not put caps back on glass, um, like the metal lids or plastic lids on glass. Right. Uh, someone else asked, what about the cardboard box from kitty litter? If it's just a box, it's fine. As long as it's flattened and put in your can. And somebody else asked about styrofoam. We were supposed to do a styrofoam now. Styrofoam was never recyclable. Nope. Um, styrofoam yeah. is always in the trash. Um, well, on food styrofoam containers are in the trash. We'll kind of discuss some other styrofoam in the second half. And I think that might be it. Okay, what about medication bottles? Medication bottles, the prescription bottles can go in your curbside. Um, just take the tables off. Um, well, we, we, we briefly had a, a terracycle program where those were accepted in um, and people would drop them off with their labels on them. Please remember to take them off. That's got your personal information on there before you put them in curbside and you can put the caps back on them and put them in your bin. Uh, batteries we'll get to in the second half. Um, it says, is it okay to nest plastic containers together? Mm -hmm. Not really. So there is different types of plastic, one through seven, we take all of them. And so eventually they do need to be sorted in their different numbers. Um, one and two are the, the more highly durable plastic and those are more sought after. They're, you know, that's the kind of plastic people really want. We do take three, four, five, six, seven, but they're more thin flimsy plastic. Um, so they're not as desirable. Um, so yeah, you shouldn't really nest your plastic together. All right, I think we're pretty much caught up with the move on this. All right, I'll share it so, for you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of alternative recycling options available. Um, so a lot of the things that Melissa was discussing, I was saying, yeah, you can't go in your curbside, it's trash. A lot of those things actually have to go in the trash. For instance, the, the metal jar lids that go on, you know, sauce jars or baby food jars. Um, they actually can be recycled, but they have to go to a scrapyard. Um, not convenient for everybody, obviously, uh, but we do have a volunteer that works with us who does collect scrap metal. And information is listed here in a slide, and you guys will have all this information at the end. Um, it'll be sent out to you, so don't feel like you have to like write down addresses or anything. You'll have all this available. Um, but in the scrap metal collection, she takes, you know, she has five gallon buckets in her way, and it's aluminum, steel, iron, and other metals. It includes like Marsa said, um, foil lids that are on apple, you know, little individual applesauce containers or some yogurts have foil lids, um, aluminum foil that you use for cooking. Um, all these things can actually be recycled through a scrapyard as long as they're clean. So you just have to make sure you rinse off any food residue first, and then that can be dropped off to our volunteer. Also things like Melissa mentioned her husband with screws, nuts, and bolts. Those are recyclable, just not in curbside. They can go to a scrapyard. Um, of course, the uh, closest one is accurate recycling. If that's something you want to do yourself, by all means, you can collect your own scrap metal and take it. If not, again, like I said, we have a local volunteer um, who does collect and you're, you're welcome to drop off to her. So you can go to the next one. Thanks. Um, plastic bags that Melissa was referring to. Those absolutely are not recyclable in your curbside. However, I'm sure most people have seen at pretty much any retail store, Giant, Acme, Lowe's, Target, and so on. They all have those bins as soon as you walk in the front door where you can recycle plastic bags. So obviously we first hope to avoid using them by using reusable, but we all get bags from time to time, whether it's at Wawa, CVS or whatever. You can bring them back and you can recycle them in the store. You just have to make sure they're empty. There's no receipts or anything in there. Um, but also there's a ton of other things that are accepted in those bins as well. So you can also put your bread bags in there, your produce bags. Um, you know, you get a five pound bag of potatoes. That bag can go in that plastic film bin at the stores. Your blue and white plastic Amazon delivery envelopes, those are accepted in, the, in that bin. However, you just have to make sure you take the label off first. 
Um, sometimes it peels off easily. Other times it's easier, honestly, just to cut the labels part off and throw that part in the trash. Um, cereal bag liners, same thing. As long as it's empty, you've, you've shaken out all the crumbs, that's acceptable in the bin. The plastic film packaging that wraps around diapers, paper towels, toilet paper, you know, cases of water, Gatorade, all that film is also accepted in those bins. And also the deflated air pillows and uh, bubble wrap. You just got to pop them, get the air out. But those are accepted in, that, in those bins as well. Um, other alternative recycling options. I know one of the questions I saw in the chat was about batteries. So batteries, obviously, not acceptable in the curbside. Uh, however, Mom's Organic Market in Bryn Mawr does recycle batteries. If you don't shop there, uh, we actually have a local volunteer. It's listed on the slide there um, who has a white outside her home, same thing. Um, you can drop off the things listed that moms accepts, which is batteries, natural, synthetic cord, uh, shoes, glasses, phones. Um, there are some other things they accept that I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but again, you can drop them off to the volunteer's house if that's closer to you in town, and the volunteer will take this stuff to mom's market. And then also there's Lowe's, they recycle rechargeable batteries only, uh, CFL bulbs, and again, plastic bags. Uh, big one, electronics. So electronics cannot go in curbside. Um, one thing we used to promote through our group was store drop-off sites like Staples has a very extensive list of items they accept, um, ranging from things like you know, printers, ink, in cartridges, uh, monitors, other things. Uh, same thing with Best Buy. Best Buy was a little more extensive where they took things like uh, curling irons, blow dryers, um, vacuums, all those things. But the newest thing that we have to make it a little bit more convenient is the township now has a small e-waste bin in the parking lot of the township building. So if anybody's familiar with it, the township does two e-waste events per year where you can you know, pretty much drive up, pull up, they take your e-waste out of your car and it gets properly recycled. Uh, but now you don't have to wait for those events if you have smaller items. So things, they say, Melissa, what's the size of a box, but actually I think the opening is a little larger than that. Um, I'd say probably anything the size of like a printer, I guess, is that a good? Yeah. Good estimate, like anything the size of like a small computer appliance. printer? Can, yeah, can fit in that thing. So any small appliances, anything with cords, you know, all that stuff can go in this small bin. Um, with this is please, if the bin is full, don't just leave it on the side, just bring it back. The bin is getting emptied now, I believe on a weekly basis. Um, if not weekly, it's absolutely dumped on a bi-weekly basis. So if it's full, just please pull it, bring it back. Also, if you bring something too big, please don't leave that on the side. That is illegal dumping. Just if you got something bigger than bigger, then this bin accepts either try and take it to Staples or Best Buy or hold it for one of the, the biannual township uh, e-waste events. So next, um, all right, so TerraCycle. So we have a group of volunteers who have pretty much teamed up and signed up for programs with TerraCycle. TerraCycle is a program that pretty much recycles things that normally would go in your trash. Um, so just one example off the top of my head is the oral care program which recycles things like toothbrushes. Toothbrushes have always just gone to the trash. There's been no alternative for that. Um, so TerraCycle does offer free programs as well as some paid programs, but all of our volunteers have signed up for the free programs. And we have collection bins where, you know, if you have products for these programs, you can come and drop them off to our bins. And then when we have a certain amount, we ship them out and we're keeping all this stuff from going to the landfill. So if you wanna to go to the next one, I believe we start the programs on the next slide. Oral care, first one. So the oral care program, it's toothbrushes, the, the outer packaging that toothbrushes come in. So, you know, they come with like the cardboard backing and that, that little plastic piece that holds the brush in. Those both are accepted, though you could just throw the cardboard backing in your curbside if you wanted to. Um, toothpaste tubes are accepted. Floss containers are accepted. Uh, the exceptions to this is Floss picks are not accepted in this. Um, and the thing I would like to stress is that toothpaste box, the box toothpaste tubes come in are accepted in this. And I know most people probably say, oh, well, why wouldn't I just throw that in my curbside? 
well, if you've ever noticed, most, most of the boxes, toothpaste tubes come in, they usually almost have like a metallic material and the cardboards with like metallic or litter, that kind of stuff isn't accepted in our curbside. It's not recyclable, um, but it is accepted in these TerraCycle programs. Um, so there's two drop-off sites for this. The township has just started hosting a drop-off site, again, at the township building. And there's also a drop-off at 117 Sycamore Road. Um, and again, they do ask that you remove as much product as possible. It doesn't have to be clean. Nobody's asking anybody to scrub toothpaste tubes, out, but just try and squeeze out as much as you can. Uh, there's a Swiffer program for anybody who uses Swiffer pads, um, dry or wet, they are accepted in this program. Um, same drop-off site as the oral care program, 117 Sycamore. Uh, foil line snack packaging program. This has hands down been our most popular program. Um, unfortunately, we were just notified that it is ending at the end of this month. We are trying to find an alternative for this program because um, there are other options out there. There's programs, but we're, we're trying to seek out free ones at this point. But for the next week or so, um, you know, chip bags, granola bar wrappers, candy bar wrappers, that type of stuff um, are accepted in this program. Uh, same as the as like the oral care stuff, as that you empty everything out. Um, you know, don't don't drop off full bags of chips. So Gerber program. Um, a lot of the Gerber packaging isn't actually accepted in curbside. Um, so pretty much anything Gerber is accepted in this program. The flexible packaging, the plastic containers that you would think are acceptable in curbside, but actually aren't. Um, the lids, they're all accepted. And also the Gerber uh, uh, clothing hangers are accepted as well. Okay, good, next one. All right, Go Go Squeeze Pouch Program. This has also been a really popular one we have. Um, it's sponsored by Go Go Squeeze, but it's actually all brands are accepted. So any of the applesauce packet, uh, pouches, yogurt pouches, um, I've even seen like newer ones are, they're like the Klondike Bar milk now. Um, those are all accepted in this program. Same thing, squeeze out as much of the excess product as possible. You can put the cap back on and you can drop them off at 2005 Belvedere. We have a volunteer there who collects as a bin located out front. You just toss them in, you ship them at the TerraCycle. TerraCycle Personal Beauty Care Program. This one is a very inclusive program. It is all brands. Um, just needs to be skincare product, hair care product, or cosmetics. Um, and as you can see in the list, this, this covers a lot of stuff, chapstick tubes and caps, soap dispensers and tubes, the body wash caps, lotion dispensers and caps, you know, shampoo and conditioner caps. Um, technically, I guess those could go in your curbside as long as you put them back on the shampoo bottle. Um, but hair gel tubes and caps, the the hairspray triggers, that's a big one. Those are not accepted in curbside because they're usually mixed materials. Um, they are accepted in this program. The cosmetics, you can see the list there, it's extensive. Um, they just ask to try to you know, remove as much of the product as you can. Uh, that's the same drop-off location as the Go Go Squeeze Pouch program. And the township building. Oh yes, I'm sorry, that was that got added township building has been there as well. So township building, you kind of have one-stop shopping for your e-waste, your personal care products, and your oral care products. Uh, so cleaning and laundry care is two different programs that are combined at one drop-off location. Uh, spray nozzles from cleaning products. So you know, like bottles of Windex, um, those nozzles are not accepted in the curbside. Uh, so they are accepted here. And then uh, Tide, Gain, Downy, and Draft all the non-recyclable parts are included in this program. So obviously like your large top, your large um, Tide container, yes, that's accepted in your curbside program. Um, but like these pouches, um, the flexible packaging, that's not accepted in your curbside. If you have the really large Tide container that has like the spout on it with the core cap, those are not acceptable in your curbside, but they are acceptable here in this program. Um, it also includes Tide to go pens as well. Uh, TerraCycle BIC program. This is one that's pretty inclusive. Um, empty writing instruments. So like, you know, pens, mechanical pencils, markers, they're all accepted in this program. The glue sticks are accepted. Watercolor dispensers, the flexible packaging that pens come in are accepted. 
Only things not accepted are free ink markers and correction fluid containers. Uh, drop off locations at 1700 Robinson for this program and actually several programs at this location. Another one, same location is the Rubbermaid and Brita programs, all, all brands of plastic and glass food storage containers. So this includes takeout containers, which is huge um, because a lot of people just think takeout containers are acceptable in curbside, but they're actually not. The only takeout containers that are acceptable are number one and two plastics. And most takeout containers are usually number five. It's what I usually see, um, but they are acceptable in this program. Uh, key to this, please make sure to rinse off residue. Uh, one, because the program asks for you to do it, but two, this we have a, it's a volunteer who collects this. So really don't want everybody dropping off their dirty food containers into their entryway of their home, because that's just gonna attract animals. Um, and for the Brita program, that is all Brita fil filters, pitchers, dispensers, bottles, faucet systems, and the packaging that they come in. Both of those, again, are at 1700 Robinson Ave. Okay, the Barilla and, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Barilla and Little Bites programs, um, those are the flexible pouches that those food products come in. Not accept, they're, otherwise they would end up in the trash, but those are both accepted by a volunteer at 211 Wiltshire. Um, again, as the other programs, please make sure you, you rinse the pasta packages out and make sure you dump out the crumbs from the Little Bites packaging. And razors. Um, all brands of razors, you know, systems, replacements, disposables, plus the packaging that they come in, uh, rigid and flexible packaging that's all accepted in this program. That one's located at 137 Washington Ave. And for Breeze Air Care, all brands of air freshener cartridges, plugs, trigger heads, and the plastic and film packaging that they're wrapped in. Uh, these are located, this program's located at 326 Virginia. Um, this one does specify no plastic bottles because pretty much most of these plastic bottles are accepted in your curbside recycling. And that's the key. You know, and I, I didn't mention already, like for some of these programs, anything that's, that can be taken in the curbside should go in curbside. These programs are really just meant for the parts that aren't acceptable. Okay, so there's more. I actually think we've added a couple more since the last time we updated this. Um, we'll get to where you can find this information later. But there are additional tire cycle programs we have volunteers collecting for. There is the contact lens packaging and includes contact lenses as well. Um, this is actually, at, I believe in an eye doctor's office, this drop off site in Ardmore. Uh, Spin Master Toys, LOL Surprise Packaging and Accessories is one of the programs. Uh, Grove and Molly Suds Packaging, that one hasn't been set up. I think we were in the works, but we didn't get a volunteer for that one yet. Um, Open Farm Wellness and Royal Canaan Pet Food Packaging is one of the programs. And Capri Sun is also one of the ones that we were hoping to get running soon. Um, oh, it's another one. Bread tags and plastic gift cards. These are also accepted at 1700 Robinson. Um, the little plastic tags, it's, you know, it's bread tags, it's tags on top of, again, I think I mentioned the, the five pound bags of potatoes, it's all the same. Um, and Melissa, I believe also the gift cards was just added, right? Yes. Okay, and that's, Pretty much gift cards for anywhere. There's no, there's no exclusions to that. If it's a gift card, it's it's included. The only thing not included is credit cards and stuff. Yeah, anything but the chip is not included. Got it. The metal okay. chip. All right. Reuse programs. So we also have volunteers that collect items that can be reused. So egg cartons. Um, and it's actually been pretty popular so far. A uh, volunteer has been on a porch at 815 Beachwood and. Um, you know, you drop off your cartons. It can be the paper, like cardboard ones or the styrofoam ones. It doesn't matter what size they are. Um, and then people are free to come pick up as they need it. So I know we've had a lot of preschool teachers picking up for crafts in the preschools. And I know there's been, I think several people who have chickens um, who've gotten them for their chicken's eggs. Um, there's also a volunteer who collects reusable ice packs, the insulated cooler bags and styrofoam coolers. Styrofoam coolers is one of the things we actually have an option for. Um, like we said before, you know, food styrofoam containers, unfortunately, are just trash. There's nothing we can do with them. Um, but the styrofoam coolers can be reused 
And we have a volunteer 1410 mill road that takes the coolers, the insulated bags and the ice packs. Um, I believe they actually may also be taking like the air pillows and bubble wrap too. I just have to confirm that one, Melissa. Uh, the next one we have is towels and blankets. There's a volunteer that collects for an animal rescue. So if you have towels and blankets that, you know, aren't in the best of shape, but still can be used, you can drop them off at, at this location and they'll get reused by a shelter. And the last program we have listed here is teachers teammates. Um, they have a drop off bin at the entry to the YMCA on Eagle Road. And uh, there's another drop off site that I believe is listed in our PDF. Yeah. Uh, but they take, they have an extensive list of supplies they take. And it doesn't have to be just new products. They do take used products. They even take broken crayons um, and they melt them down and make new crayons. So it's a great opportunity if you have like, you know, extra folders, extra paper, pens, crayons um, that you just don't need and want to get rid of. You can donate them to teachers, teammates, and they get them to schools in need. So medication disposal, this is actually the fourth program that's at the township building. Um, the other three that we already discussed are up top at the, you know, the main entrance for the township building, but also down the bottom at the entrance to the police station is this medicine drop off bin. Um, you can drop, you can see here prescription medications, over the counter medications, vitamins, drug samples, you know, pet medications, ointments, lotions, all of that's accepted. Um, the only thing is either the medications have to be in a bottle or you have to have them in like a sealed Ziploc bag or something. You cannot put medication loose in this bin. Um, so actually have four drop-offs in that one location there, which is pretty cool. This is a map that one of our volunteers recently created for us, which has been helpful for a lot of people because obviously since it's all volunteer-based, our volunteers live throughout the township. Um, so it kind of makes it a little easier for people to visually see, um, you know, if you're interested in, in participating in a few of these programs, you can see on the map where these where they're located, um, kind of try and map it out because the whole point is to not really go out of your way to do this stuff. It's, you know, if you're headed out to the grocery store or running an errand, you kind of want to try and, you know, hit the drop offs that are on your way. So here's just some examples of different people's TerraCycle home collections. Um, we have a group that we'll talk about a little bit more towards the end. Uh, it's a Facebook group. It's called Reduce, Reuse, Recycle, Haverford Township. Um, and one of the things we see a lot, uh, people kind of tend to get overwhelmed by it. You know, there's a lot of programs and not really sure, well, you know, how do I set this up? You know, how do I collect everything? Um, the biggest thing we kind of just try to tell people is just make it convenient for you. It doesn't have to look like it's out of a magazine. It doesn't have to look pretty. It's just whatever's convenient, a hook on the side of the fridge, on the wall, under a cabinet, you know, just somewhere that's convenient for you. Um, these are some photos from collection sites. Um, if you see the one on the left, there's a, there's a bin right there in the entryway with the papers listing the programs. Uh, to the right, metal collection bins with, you know, obviously the, the bins are labeled with what each program is. Um, not sure what that bottom one is. <laughs> Just excess supplies. We just want Got it. <laughs> here's to understand you're going to be packaging things. You're going to be storing things. Got you need to have a place to put all this stuff. And, you know, I, I do the, the Rubbermaid one. And sometimes I get these very large party tray yeah. containers and I hold on to them until I have enough to package it. So again, I was talking about the group Reduce, Reuse, Recycle. The big thing we try and stress to people is to not get overwhelmed just pick small changes and the small changes eventually lead to big changes. And the most sustainable thing to do is just change one or two things at a time. You know, think about, you know, if you go over and look at the list in the PDF of the TerraCycle programs, you know, what's, what are the, what are the items your family uses the most? You know, is it, you know, do you have little kids? Are you going through squeeze pouches, you know, or I hate to say it, I normally would go to the foil line snack packaging program since that's the biggest one. Um, but, you know, focus on, on the waste that your family produces the most and just start there. Um, and even more importantly, reduce what you can, because, you know, even for me, like, you know, I've taken on a lot of these changes, but we're still, we're nowhere near close to zero waste in our house, but the recycling, it gets exhausting. Like it's, it's a lot. So I find it's easier to just figure out where I can reduce. So I don't have to figure out where I can recycle something or what my alternative program is. If I can just reduce it in the first place it makes it a lot easier. Um, and I think. All right, 
Yeah, we're, we're at the end. So just last one last slide here. Um, we just want to make everybody aware that the Haverford EAC, we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram, we uh, have this recycling group that Jessica talked about. Um, and in addition to that, we have a brand new website. It's now live. Please check it out. It's called HaverfordClimateAction.org. Um, this is an all-in-one climate change information specific for Haverford residents. 43% uh, of greenhouse gases emissions come from choices made by the average American. Um, this website is a way that you can find ways that you personally can have an impact to reduce your carbon footprint um, and reduce your emissions. There's topics there like energy, transportation, food, yard and waste, stormwater. Um, there's information about the Environmental Advisory Committee, tree tenders, rain gardens, farmers markets, um, and of course, township wide projects like this TerraCycle. So um, we have a PDF that we can email anybody who wants to email us. Or if you go to this website, the PDF is on there and you could see all the different TerraCycle programs that we have available, where the uh, locations are that you can drop them off and things like that. Um, and the, the last thing I want to make everyone aware, have switch at gmail.com. This is the email for Haverford Environmental Advisory Committee. You can email us for pretty much anything. You can get this TerraCycle PDF of addresses. You can get personalized help. You, if you are thinking about getting solar panels or buying an electric car, anything like that, email us and somebody will answer it and help you. Um, and most importantly, to volunteer with us. Um, our meetings, they're actually the first Wednesday of every month, which is brand new this year. And we actually happen to have this scheduled beforehand. So we're not there tonight, but there is other, other members there working very hard um, at, at the meeting, um, but it is public and, you know, Residents are always welcome to come. We're always looking for help. Um, we had uh, Haverford Township Day this, this past year, and this is the first year we actually had volunteers helping us so that we could properly recycle and compost. And we were able to save um, get something like 43% of, of the waste um, was either recycled or composted. So, you know, there's a plenty of opportunities. Uh, you can answer calls or emails. You can volunteer for one event. Um, you can put some lawn signs in people's lawns. There's always something to do, big or small. You don't need to have a background in environmental um, anything. I mean, I, honestly, I'm a dental hygienist and Jessica is a police officer. So if we can do it with two little kids at home, anybody can do it. And, and that's, actually, that's actually what I was just gonna say. Like, you know, I, I got into this through Melissa and you know, I just I post it in the Havertown Moms page to see if anybody would be interested in this TerraCycle stuff. And that's how I got involved. And truth be told, I've never been to an, an EAC meeting in person. <laughs> and I think I've actually only attended like four of them through Zoom. Um, but we still do the volunteering work with the EAC. It's just, as Melissa just stated, with little kids and work, it's very difficult. The meetings are pretty much always at bedtime. My toddlers aren't having it. Mm -hmm. um, but before, before we wrap up, I want to get back to the questions in the chat because there were some more that came up. Somebody asked about um, olive oil containers for curbside as long as they're clean. Um, Melissa, as far as I know, that's a yes, as long as they're yeah. clean. I know for me, when I have olive oil containers, I kind of soak them with a little bit of dish soap to get the that greasiness off them. Yeah. Um, so that is those are good to go. Paper coffee cups are not. Um, they are plastic lines. So unfortunately that's one of those things we try to stress. Um, if you can use a reusable, you know, travel coffee mug, do that. Um, there was a program we were participating with TerraCycle. Um, it was partnered with Subaru and Subaru was accepting them and recycling them, but that program kind of disappeared for a while and still looking, still trying to figure out if it's up and running again, according to TerraCycle's website, it is, but nobody's been able to verify there's actually been at the Subaru dealership. Um, so the best advice for that would be to just avoid the, the paper coffee cups. They're not recyclable. Um, presentation, I think I already mentioned. A question about Here. styrofoam. We didn't get into that, but we do have a volunteer that collects styrofoam mm -hmm. and glass. Um, and there is a facility, I think it's Norristown or so, that she brings up all the styrofoam to a company that will recycle them. So we have a volunteer that you can drop that off to. And then the glass gets um, sent to um, an artwork thing called Project Underground, where they use the glass for mosaics. So there's a lot more options than what we listed. We, we kind of highlighted some of the, a few of them, some of the better ones. We're always getting new ones and changing and adding more. And, and unfortunately, 
some of them are dropping. So, you know, TerraCycle ends a program and, you know, that a new one pops up. But again, same thing with this volunteer, important to note with the styrofoam. Um, it's only certain types of styrofoam. It's not the soft kind that, you know, is flexible. It is only the, the rigid styrofoam that like would snap if you bend it. Um, and again, food styrofoam containers are not included in that as well. Um, somebody asked about nesting cans, I guess, kind of following up on the nesting of the plastic containers, Melissa, um, would you suggest avoiding nesting pretty much anything in curbside? Yep, absolutely. Okay, and then next one, does anyone know if batteries can go in the e-waste bin? As far as I know, no. Um, that, but like I said earlier, mother, uh, Mom's Organic Market does recycle batteries and we do have a volunteer locally who does accept them if you don't travel to Mom's. Um, next person, Floyd Lines. Okay, that was just a comment. Uh, if you were unable to make all of these drop-off places, would it all go into the trash? You could spend a full week driving around and finding containers. Yeah, that, that's actually what I got to. That's the stuff goes in the trash um, if you're not gonna drop it off to volunteers, which is why I stress, you know, just focusing on a couple of programs that your family produces the most waste for. I mean, I listed all those programs. I don't participate in well over half of them because we just don't produce enough waste for those. And you would be spending a ton of time driving all over the place, dropping stuff off. So I focus on the programs that my family produces the most waste for, because at the end of the day, we're not, we're not suggesting you should be perfect or zero waste or just saying, you know, we can do a little better. You know, there is stuff that doesn't have to go to a landfill. Um, next one, BIC, are other brands of pens and pencils? Okay, yes, BIC is not brand specific. It is any writing instruments, um, so. I'd like to make a note. So if you look at the PDF, we specify which programs are any brand. So if it says any brand, it could be any brand. If it doesn't say any brand, it's specific to that brand. Uh, somebody asked, can you provide a link to that map for recycling? Um, it's in the PDF. That, yeah, it's all in the PDF. Um, also, how clean should everything be? Does one little spot of grease ruin something? As clean as you can make it. Yeah. Yeah, as clean as it can be, but like you don't have to feel like you have to, like, you don't have to put your jars through a dishwasher. Um, I don't want people to like kind of be deterred and think that, you know, it needs to be perfect and it needs to be perfectly by. I think kind of somebody alluded to earlier, you know, when it rains, things gets wet. Um, they ask for them to be dry because they don't want people sending containers in with like three ounces of juice in the bottom of it. So, you know, if there's a couple of drips of water, it's not the end of the world. Um, but they do ask for you to have it as dry as possible. Personally, I put my recycling in my sink and when I'm washing my dishes, I'll let the water flow into it mm -hmm. and I'll let it sit there for a while, let right. things loosen up. And some things are just not worth it. I really don't want to waste all my water. So mm -hmm. if I have a peanut butter container or like that marshmallow stuff the kids like in their sandwich, it's I just throw it out. It's better just to throw it out than waste two gallons of water cleaning it. Right. Um, next question, just to clarify, are bottle caps recyclable to screw back on? And that was a yes, as long as it's, you know, plastic caps going back on plastic bottles, that is okay. Um, next one was just a comment and thank you for the compliment. And can I show something and ask if it's recyclable? Um, yeah, you don't have a problem with that, do you? No, sure. Yes. Looks like it was Lindsay and Christian, maybe said that. Um, yeah, that was me. Okay. Um, so I bought a box of tofu at, at my Acme. Um, and the thing is, I see there's a recyclable symbol here. It's got the number two on it. But the problem is there's this plastic wrap that is so stuck that I can't just, I can't take it off. <laughs> is that going to affect how it's recycled? I don't think so. I mean, you got most of it off if that's as much as you can do. Yeah, and I can't imagine it being a problem because it's, it's plastic on plastic. And the big rule is, you know, no mixed materials. But since they're both plastic, I can't see there being a problem with that. And since it's a number two, that, that's accepted in curbside. Yeah. Okay. And there's also this. This came from uh, lasagna, I think. Yes. It's a so container. That can that go, go in, on curbside? No, it cannot go on your curbside. However, that can go to scrap metal. So if that was something you were interested in participating in, um, like things like that, the, the, those foil pans, the foil lids for yogurt or applesauce, you know, screws, nuts and bolts. We have a volunteer who takes all of that. So if that was something you wanted to do, you could recycle that with our scrapper. 
Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Let me see any other ones. Melissa, did, you see, did I miss any? Oh, I think that's it. All right. If you have any more questions, feel free to email us at habswitch at gmail. Yes, and for anybody who's on Facebook, if you're interested, just look up Reduce, Reuse, Recycle, Haverford Township. Um, feel free to join the group. Um, questions are asked daily, kind of like what Christian just did. We just, we, people post photos, say, hey, is this recyclable? Um, and it's, it's a really great group effort. Like we started less than a year ago. I think it was maybe the end of February last year when we started the group. And we're up to almost 560 members and just every, everybody brings something to the table. Everybody's answering each other's questions. So you always get answers like in a pretty quick time period. Um, and of course, all of our information is available there too for all the recycle programs, for all the reduced programs. It's all listed there in our albums and PDF. Um, so we really try and keep all that information available for you to be like, easily found. Any other questions? No, I think that's it. Thank you guys for joining. Um, I just wanted to mention upcoming for Earth Day, we will have a, another webinar about this Haverford Climate website. Um, so feel free to check us out. There will be another link again through Haverford Recreation. Um, and we look forward to uh, having everybody changing for the better. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for your participation. And um, we will send out an email with the, the slides and also the PDF so that everybody has all that information. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you, appreciate it. Good night. Yeah, amazing webinar, thanks. <laughs>